This is Greg Remke, part two on a presentation uh, on the United Nations and reform, and looking at the United Nations as drawn from the ideas of the New Deal and the Roosevelt administration's four freedoms. So this, where we stopped before, was in the section thinking about rights. The United Nations claims, that is the Declaration of Human Rights, claims not only a right to freedom of speech and freedom of the press, but also that there's a right to a good job with good pay, a right to education or to medical care. And these are positive rights claims. That is, they're claims that, that not just that people shouldn't interfere with other people's pursuit of freedom of speech or freedom of the press, or that government shouldn't stop people from freedom of association. Instead, these are claims that, that people deserve material things to be given to them somehow. Now, separating access to these things, that is, maybe people shouldn't be banned from access to good jobs or access to education, which of course they were, have been in the past. But, so let's go through this and I'll try and uh, make sense of those differences. To fulfill the, the rights claim idea, rights to a job, to housing, to education, that means actions by government. Just as the government protects us from people attacking us, the idea is similarly, uh, if we have a right to food, someone's got to provide us food, the government then is charged by this claim to provide those for us. So that means taxes, subsidies, regulations of some kind to uh, force these things or to uh, provide these things by the, by the state. National Public Radio regularly uh, talks about education as a right and that, you know, some people aren't getting adequate education. So therefore, the government needs to step in and do more and, and similarly with other, other steps. So this contrast between <clears throat> positive rights claims, things that need to be given to people and negative rights claims that no one should interfere with my, my right to associate with who I choose or my right to pursue... Um, uh, uh, property and engage in voluntary transactions, freedom of contract. Um, so let's contrast negative and positive rights. The United States founding documents, the idea of these rights, they're not granted by government. They're rights we have by virtue of being people, being human beings. Uh, all men are created equal and endowed by their creator, not by their government, endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Among these, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. Freedom of speech in the press and assembly, uh, these are rights people have, again, by their creator. Government should not, uh, is, is uh, called upon by the Bill of Rights not to interfere with these natural rights of people. According to the Constitution, the federal government's powers are only those enumerated powers, the only powers listed, and those are delegated to government by people. Uh, with the consent of the governed to do things that are hard for people to do themselves. In fact, the only positive right that's uh, um, in the Constitution is the right of a person to a trial by jury, which means that a jury must be assembled to provide this uh, jury trial. So that's sort of forcing people for jury duty. But beyond that, uh, negative and positive rights, the government should is only involved with negative rights, not positive rights, because the, the claim is positive rights don't exist or they're not legitimate. All other powers are left to the states, the order of the people, as the Bill of Rights, Ninth and Tenth Amendments uh, argue. So the United Nations takes a different course. It talks about a human right to development. This is in particular in the 86 Amendments, the UN Declaration on the Right to Development. This was... Uh, part of an effort to expand uh, United Nations operations and the argument that negative rights as liberties or freedom from, uh, this is an effort to show where the Bill of Rights and the UN, you know, go off course, separate courses and looking at how society should be organized. Negative rights that the Constitution, the Bill of Rights talks about, are liberties or freedom, freedoms from. The view of the founders is that government by nature tends to oppress people. And there is no government, of course, there's only people. People in government 
the kings, for example, and the aristocrats, people empowered by the state, power sort of goes to their head, it harms them. They're corrupted by power, they're fallen people. So government should not allow people in power to oppress other people. So the freedom is really people's freedom from government, which means from people empowered by government. It's a nice line in The Wizard of Oz, where Dorothy and Toto find behind the curtain this old man who's manipulating the great and powerful wizard uh, machinations in the movie. And she's, Dorothy's furious. She yells at the Wizard of Oz. Uh, she says, you're a, you're a very bad man. And his response is, no, he, he's a good man. He's just a bad wizard, right? He says, I'm a good man, I'm just a bad wizard. So the idea is a man given the power of the great and powerful laws, tends to abuse it, tends to be arbitrary, which he was in Wizard of Oz until he was caught out. Okay, these freedoms from these sense of man versus the state derive from the 17th and 18th century theories of the English Civil War and of the American and, and French Revolution. The negative rights are civil and political. That is, they're opposed to government intervention, and particularly in this quest for human dignity, uh, people should be free to pursue their own ends, but government should be limited in its intervention in the everyday aspects of the society, whether through taxation, that's why the income tax was unconstitutional originally, or whether through uh, accusing people of a crime, search and seizure of people's property, all these were limited by the Bill of Rights uh, uh, doctrines that forced uh, people to, uh, governments to restrict their powers. So positive rights claims are different. Positive claims that are in the UN Declaration of Rights are sort of entitlements or rights to, things we should have, education, health care, housing. Those are all things we want to have, all things that are important, but not things that the government is charged to provide for us according to the founders. These, these positive rights claims were part of the 19th century socialist traditions that are pursued by uh, revolutionaries and welfare state advocates. These uh, notes, by the way, I'm drawing from a book called The Power of Freedom, United, Uniting Human Rights and Development uh, by a French author. This is a Cato Institute book, and I had copies of this to distribute to offer for sale at our uh, debate workshops this year. I, I liked the book because it used the United Nations language and it applied classical liberal ideas to the various uh, programs and policies of the United Nations. Whereas most books on economic freedom don't talk about the United Nations, they don't uh, consider it particularly relevant. So the challenge with these positive rights claims is that these create obligations or duties on the part of government and on the part of people to provide uh, goods and services for others. The obligations created by negative rights claims are very different. They're obligations on our part not to interfere with the freedoms of other people, not to interfere with other people's freedom to associate or freedom of the press or, or freedom to pursue uh, happiness. Very different uh, uh, ways of looking at this. 